Tell you what, it's a bit cold here this morning. It's only five degrees Celsius. You can tell by the way I'm decked out. Anyway, before we uh, go over and do a bit of ploughing in the uh, potato areas, I've got to put a battery in a vehicle here. Um, so we'll see how we go with that. Picked up a new battery this morning. Fingers crossed I've got the right one. Oh well, at least the terminals are on the right side. Yep, perfect. Okay, it's time for some quality relaxation time in the tractor cab. Uh, nothing like being in the tractor. I love it. I really do. Anyway, the plan here is this area down here is going to be used for potatoes this year. And what I really want to do is get it ploughed up a couple of times to get some air into it. Um, and get the moisture down into it. So when it comes potato planting time in a few weeks, we have all of the areas ploughed up, ready to go. All we've got to do is run the disc harrows over them to break them up a little bit better, just to crumble them up. And then bang, we can put the potatoes in. Well, that was a busy morning. Our neighbour's cow got out, a steer, and uh, geez, I tell you what, was he hard to get back in. It's taken about an hour and a half to get him back in. Anyway, um, my plan was to go over and finish the ploughing off where the potatoes are going. Should only take half an hour, maybe. So, I'm gonna go and try to make a start. This is our new area to put potatoes in. Uh, I expected to get a little bit more done today. But the soil has gone down beautiful just with a moldboard plough at the moment before we do any other preparations. Um, I'll take you over here and you can have a look at it. It's uh, really good soil to grow potatoes in. Crumbles up beautifully. And I did say on radio the other day that uh, the soil's so good for potatoes, you could have it for breakfast. And uh, the way it's gone down today, I think you probably could. Have a look at this. Now this is just with the moldboard plough. No uh, disc harrows or anything over it. You can see where we've turned the weeds in underneath. But look at that. 
that has crumbled up beautiful you could just about put potatoes straight in there so I'm really pleased with that we got a bit more preparation to do on it but uh, certainly getting it done well we're over here with the beans again I'm gonna run the uh, weeder up them again I do that every couple of weeks uh, until they get just a little bit too high to do it to because uh, the bar on the weeder tends to knock them down a bit so we don't want to do that after they're going so well uh, I don't know if you can see them in here but they are going pretty damn well at the moment there are a few patches here uh, where we might have planted them a bit too deep or a bird's got a bit of the seed but yeah they are going along really well and so we'll just take a bit of a walk around here and I'll show you what's going on we've got the beans in here we've got an area dug up over there for some potatoes to go in uh, for the house in that area over here we've got more beans um, and they're going along pretty good as well so we'll run down those rows there as well over the back I haven't ploughed that up yet that was in with potatoes um, last year so what we're going to do with that is put peas in there and it's the same with this area down here I think we'll put uh, peas in down there and then over here we've got an area for potatoes that we've got dug up already these are for the pink eyes down there and then up the bank here then over the back over that way uh, there's an easterly facing slope there and they used to grow oats on it years ago so um, we started plowing that up sort of roughly at the moment we're going to put some uh, potatoes over there as well this area here should take maybe 600 kilos of seed which is about a thousand pounds 12 hundred pounds or something of seed for people who work in the Imperial um, so there'll be quite a lot in here we've got about the same going in over the back there as well so um, we should have yeah a lot of potatoes this year okay a big job for today is to repair this water pump um, it's not going I reckon what's wrong with it is the needle valve up in the carby is either jammed or it's got a blockage uh, in the pipe so what we're going to do is take the needle valve out and give it a bit of a blow out there make sure it's all okay and see if we can get it going again it's a great little pump it's a little azito pump but it started surging when it was operating and um, that's a bit of an indication of a, a fuel problem there so um, we'll take the needle valve out and see if we can get it going okay i do have rubber gloves here that i'm putting on just like a doctor but a little bit small for me so we'll uh, we'll just try to do the best we can with them so the first thing we've got to do is undo the bowl off the carby that's no big deal but there is a rubber gasket up here behind it between the carby and the bowl Siri's talking to me. Anyway. Okay. How does that work? I don't know. Right, so we've got the bowl off. Now what we need to do is don our glasses. Right, next thing, there's a pin in here holding the float in. It's pretty easy to get out. And just pull it out like that. For God's sake, whatever you do, make sure you don't lose it. Although I do have some spares here. So we'll take the float off. Just be careful. We don't pull too much out here. Okay, there's the needle valve there. It's on a spring. And it's all stuck in there nicely. So we'll just put that down gently to make sure we don't knock anything out of that. Now, up this hole here the gold one there is where the problem could be so what we're going to do is blow some air up in there 
And if there is a problem, we'll see if we can clear it to get a um, consistent flow of fuel coming down into the bowl so it can be then sucked back up into the carby. Okay, let's do this. We'll get our handy little battery operated air pump. I've actually put the rubber tubing over the end of the air hose on the pump. Now, I'm going to actually put this over that as tightly as what I can. Turn her on. Now what we've got to do is put it back together, which really shouldn't be too difficult. Right, so we've got that there. Try not to knock this gasket out that's around there because that's very tricky. Very tricky to get to stay in there when you're putting the bowl back on. And so is this, when you're trying to get this back in here, we'll try it from down below. Ah, uh, yeah. Different angle. That worked. Okay, let's just see. We tip it up a little bit. Let's just see what sort of flow comes out of there. Okay. That seems better than what it was before when I tried it. So what we'll do is put this bowl back on. Looks like we've got it on there without moving the gasket, which is good because I had trouble with it yesterday when I was messing around with it. Getting There's a groove that goes around the edge of the carby there and uh, the gasket is very springy and it kept popping out. So um, at least we've got it in there without a problem this time. Righto, so we've got that back together. So now what we'll do is we'll set it on the ground and uh, see if it starts. Hopefully it does. My favourite spray. We'll turn the petrol on, pull that back. Okay. So now we go this time. Okay, that's got it going. So we'll put it back on the back of the four wheeler. Um, that's what I carted about on. And we may even give it a crack pumping a bit of water tonight. Oh, that's a heavy little bugger. So anyway, we've got it going and uh, that's certainly a relief.